Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe and today I'm going to show you how to create the type from Thor Ragnarok. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with the type tool, make sure we select black as our foreground color and we're going to type in Ragnarok. Now notice the font I'm using here is Damarin Bold and I got that from DA Font. Uh, you might find some others that are more accurate but it's pretty close to what they're using and I'm just going to increase the size of it here and we're going to drop that in the middle there. Alright so let's just create a new layer and what I want to do is I'm just going to hit the control key or the command and click on the type here and that makes a selection and make sure our layer on top is selected. Now we're going to fill it with a gradient. So we need to find those colors. So let's click on the gradient tool and when you see that make sure linear is selected and then you'll see the gradient swatch. Click on there and this will pop it open. So let's make the gradient this use. By the way it's an incredibly 80s kind of a looking thing there. You feel like you want to drive an iRock Camaro. Maybe it's kind of the humor there. I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, so we're going to click on this there and now what we want to do is we want to get rid of this color stop by just clicking and dragging it away. Now we're going to click on the next one and we're going to change this to red. So let's grab that red that we're using right here, click OK. And now we're going to click and drag in that white one, pull it away. Alright, let's pull this way down here and then we're going to take this middle, this is where the two blend. We're going to pull that across because we want that to look pretty much like that. I think that's pretty similar to what we see on the logo and I'm going to click OK. Now I'm going to, with the gradient tool still selected, linear, normal, we're going to start at the top and I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to drag down and then I'm going to release and then what that does is it creates our type and I'm just going to click away. Alright, so we've got our gradient on top. The next thing we need to do though is we need to put that white outline around it. But the white outline doesn't go around the whole type, just around the top and it fades out. So I'll show you a little trick for that. So I'm just going to hit Control J to copy it. And then I'm going to hide this layer in between. So you can see there we've got the black there just so we can see what's going on when we do it. Now let's go down here and maybe if we want to change our background to a black and might make it easier. Alt delete option backspace on the Mac will fill with the foreground color which is black. Alright so let's select our layer on the top here and we're going to choose effects and now we're going to choose stroke and let's just pull this out of the way so we can see what's going on. What we want to do is create a nice white stroke and notice it's inside and that's looking good. Now we want this to fade out around about the middle. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new layer mask. Then we're going to grab a gradient tool and we're going to change this foreground to background. There we go. And notice it's looking really weird. That's okay. Let's turn our layer on underneath. And now what we're going to do is fix the reason that's looking so strange. So if we go under here and we double click on effects and we go and we've got our blending options, just turn on layer mask hides effects and boom, now it's going to look good. Very simple. All right, we're getting there. We're very close. We've got two other things we need to do. We need to create this little kind of gleam in there and we also need to get the 3D extrusion. So why don't we start with the 3D extrusion? So I'm just going to go down there. We're going to hide these just so we can see it and we're going to select our type layer and of course if I hide the background you can see it right there. Now we're going to go up under 3D and then we're going to choose new extrusion and it's going to pop open. Do you want the 3D workspace? Yeah sure why not. Alright so we've got our extrusion but we need to make that extrusion red and we need to make it go down a little bit. So the first thing we're going to do is why don't we have a look at the color. So if you see under the 3D panel go to the materials one which is the third one over then we're going to choose the extrusion material under diffuse, make it red. Click OK. There we go. Now we're going to change the shape of this. So we'll click once in the type and then you'll see this little gimbal thing here. I think they call it a gnomon. 
and I'm going to drag it up. We're going to bring it up near the top here and notice that list extrusion shows through a little bit more and maybe even increase the depth a little bit. Give it a little bit more red. All right, looking close, we've got to fix the lighting. Click this little light icon and then this enables us to see the direction of the light which is more coming from this direction, which is close to what they do on a movie poster. Okay, so another thing we need to do is turn the shadow off because we don't want any shadows because they didn't use any. And that's looking pretty good. All right. So let's go back to our layers panel and we're going to select our two layers there. Then you select the layer, shift select to get both layers here. So now what we're going to do is just drag this up. I'm going to hold down the shift key so we keep our positioning. And then we're just going to pop that right on top. All right, looking good. So now we're still going to do this little um, glassy thing in here and also the grooves in there. So why don't we create these grooves now? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new layer on top and I'm going to grab the line tool. Okay, with the line tool, I've set it to about four pixels right now. And I'm just going to select and drag across. And I'm using black right now. I'm just hitting the V key just to hit the move and I'm just going to pull it down. Now I want to copy this. So that would be control J, command J on Mac. And then I'm going to hold down shift and hit the arrow key, the up arrow key once. Let's do the same thing again. Control J to copy, shift arrow key, and that moves it up one more time. All right, let's do it one more. Control J and shift to bring it up one more time. All right, so we've got those lines here. Now there's a couple of ways we could do this. Let me select these lines here. That's the four layers and I want to merge them together. Control E and then we command E on Mac to merge. Now there's a couple of ways of doing this. One of them I could drag it down here and if I hit the Alt or the Option key while I go between the two layers and I click in here, I can clip those in there. See that? And that actually works quite well. The other way I could do it if I wanted was actually cut that out and then put a little bevel in there if you really wanted to do that. But I think this is going to work quite well. And let's turn our background on. One last thing left. If you noticed inside there we had this kind of like um, glassy kind of 80s um, chromey thing going on. Let's just call it that. <laughs> All right, so let's do that now. So I'm just going to create a new layer. And then what I want to do is I'm going to grab our line tool one more time. But this time, make sure it's set to pixels. Make sure the foreground set to white. And let's go a little bit wider. Let's make it, I don't know, maybe eight. And I'm just going to drag that across. And then just kind of bump it up a little bit. Okay, looking good. And I need to get that above everything else. Okay, great. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to blur it. So I'm going to choose filter blur and we're going to grab our Gaussian blur. And that's not bad. Maybe a little wider. There we go. That's looking quite good. And I want to kind of double up on that. So control J. And that gives us two of those layers. And I select them together. Hit control E to merge them. And maybe add a blur one more time. Okay, there we go. And I probably, I'm going to hit Control J again just to increase the density of that. And so what I should have done is maybe just started with a wider line, but this will work fine. So we hit Control E once again, selecting the two layers to get them in there. All right, so what we want to do now is we just want to make them fit within that area. So the way to do that is just Control click on the type layer. That selects the outline of the type. We want to just mask that out. So we're just going to click on the layer mask and notice that that gives us that there. We're almost there. I've got one more thing I want to do and that's just to create that kind of little uh, curvy thing in there. So why don't we go in um, and that's a technical term and we're going to grab the pen tool. Now if you're using the um, Photoshop CC 2018 you'll notice is a new curvature pen tool. So all we're doing is we're just dragging across and I'm just going to make a curve in there. You'll see what I'm going to do in a sec. And see with this curvature pen, we can actually just click in there and create this wavy little thing by clicking and dragging like that. See that? Now, of course, you can do this manually with the pen tool um, just by dragging around. 
All right, so that's pretty good. Let me bring that one down a little bit, though. And I'll bring this one down. Cool. All right, so we've got to, eh, let's add a little bit more. There we go. So we've got that kind of wavy thing. You know, it's a very kind of 80s um, computer, early computer kind of way of creating. It's kind of a fun effect, you know. It's kind of cool that they did this. So let's go around here. We're just going to click around to just kind of close this path out. Excellent. Now we need to make a selection out of this. So what we want to do is we just want to go down to the paths panel if it's not showing. So we just go into window, we choose paths and you'll see the paths panel. And then all we need to do is control click or command click on Mac and that makes that selection around there. Excellent. So let's go to our layers panel and all we want to do now is just fill that part of our mask with black. And notice we've got the uh, foreground color right now is black. So if we just hit the Alt Delete on Windows, and that would be Alt Backspace on Mac. And then we're just going to turn it off Control D, and there we go. All right, now I'm going to show you how to create the bevel around these slots just for fun. So if you remember, we put them on this layer. So all we need to do is Control or Command click to load the selection from that layer. Now we're going to hide it. And then the next layer down, notice this is our type. So we're just going to go on there and we're just going to hit the delete key. And then control D to turn it off. And now we've actually got the cuts. Now, if we want to give these cuts that three dimensional oomph, what we're going to do is choose effects and then we're going to choose bevel and emboss. And notice there when we turn that bevel and emboss on, that's looking a lot more like what we got in there. In fact, I'm going to turn that depth down a little bit and play around with the size to about there. Click OK. And that's pretty much what we've got there on the logo. All right, so there we go, guys. If you like this tutorial, smash that like button into dust. If you like Photoshop tutorials, I do at least one a week. Make sure you hit the subscribe button right now, become part of the cafe crew, and you get my new tutorials every week. Add a comment, I'd love to talk to you. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.